Good morning. Welcome to the worship of God at First Baptist Church on this Ascension Sunday. You all know Ascension, don't you? It's that day Jesus takes off like Superman or something like that. We're glad you're here today. If you would, if you're a guest, uh, look around, find a card in the pew rack that's for uh, visitors. Fill it out for me so that I can connect with you uh, later uh, in whatever way you check uh, that you would like for that to happen. A few announcements as we uh, begin worship today. Uh, and there's a list of things on the inside panel here. Uh, the first one that I'm going to highlight is on Wednesday the 16th, which is this Wednesday. Notice the business meeting is at 6 p.m. rather than 6.30. 6 p.m. because this Wednesday the fish fry and dessert auction is happening. Now if you're a visitor and you're wondering what that is, uh, don't wander long, just come because it's a great time. Bridget Myers can tell you all about it. Uh, Lawrence McGeorge will auction off uh, all kinds of desserts. Uh, we'll raise money for the kids and the youth to go on trips and do missions with. So uh, 6.30, fish fry and dessert auction. If you skip on down, you'll see Wednesday, May the 23rd is the next church council meeting. How do I know if I'm on church council? I am the chairperson of a committee that does ministry in the church. That's how I know. You're invited. And if you can't make it, we would love for you to appoint somebody in your stead. That would help a lot. Then uh, there's a reminder about repair affair coming up. That's a mission trip over in McCreary County. Save the date for that. And on the back, I want you to notice this piece of art. This piece of art from the Holy Land that depicts God as a mother hen. It is based on a passage in Matthew's Gospel where Jesus is teaching. And I wanted you to see that this Mother's Day, this mothering image of God there. Uh, one last thing. See that insert? That one right there? Please fill that out for me. Uh, I'm going to do a sermon series with your favorite scripture passages this summer, if I get your favorite scripture passages. <laughs> Please fill that out. Fill, it's front and back. It won't take that long. Fill it out. Drop in the offering plate. Bring it by the office. Help me uh, prepare for this summer. Okay. I suppose those are all the announcements. Why don't you uh, stand up? and greet the people around you.
We're celebrating Ascension Sunday. Let's begin with a hymn, 219, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise, as we stand together. Let's pray. God of love, we come to praise you this morning. You are creator who made each of us in your image to love your world. You're like a father who leads us and teaches us. And you're like a mother who gathers us in and protects us. And you're like a brother who walks beside us and listens to us. You are all of these to us and so much more, and we are grateful. We give you our ears, our eyes, and our voices today in worship. Be with us and accept the praise we bring in Jesus' name. Amen. We take your bulletin as we read together our litany of invitation and confession. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward one another. I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. With the eyes of our hearts and light, we see the greatness of Christ's power and work in all who believe. People of God, let us repent of those things that have drawn us away from God and our neighbors, that we may receive the joy of forgiveness. God, God is love. And God is relationship. We confess that we hold back and fall short in our love for neighbors, self, and God. We ask forgiveness and trust in grace. 
The promise of our faith is that we are already forgiven and in Christ's name, given the power to rise up and overcome all that separates us from God and from one another. We are forgiven. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. Breathe out the love of God. Let us lift our voices in thanks and praise to God. Writing to Theophilus, Luke recounts the story of Jesus' resurrection appearance and his ascension into heaven. A reading from the book of Acts. Theophilus, the first scroll I wrote concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning, right up to the day when he was taken up into heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He had appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, This is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but in only a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? Jesus replied, it isn't for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going away, and as they were staring toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood standing next to them. They said, Galileans, why are you standing here looking toward heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way that you saw him go. Here ends the first lesson. If you're like me, you had a full week this week. You might even be a little tired this morning. Pause. Breathe deep. Breathe in the Holy Spirit, maybe, as you ready your heart to pray with me. loving God. We, your people, gather in this sacred space this morning to hear scripture, to confess and be forgiven, to sing, to hear sermon, to change our lives. 
And God, we admit this morning that we really do think that all of that would be a little easier if it weren't for the ascension. If, in fact, you had stuck around through the ages in person to help all along the way. God, but ascension is the path chosen. It is not the end of the story, though. God, we, your church, are still here, still praying, still singing, still learning, still serving in 2018 now. God, even then, we still need your guidance, your presence, and your help. And if we are to receive it, O oh Lord, we must be prayerful. So we pray multiple times in our service this morning, and we also practice praying. We practice praying by joining our voices in one bold church voice and praying that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. We do that now, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Luke ends his gospel by telling of the ascension of Jesus into the heavens. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. Look, I'm sending to you what my father promised, but you are to stay in the city until you've been furnished with heavenly power. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and he blessed them. And as he blessed them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. They worshiped him, and they returned to Jerusalem overwhelmed with joy, and they were continuously praising in the temple. 
Here ends the gospel lesson. Our hymn of stewardship, number 365. Let's stand and sing more love to thee, O Christ. Let's pray again. God, we come to this time in our service after we've sung the gospel, after we've heard scripture read. We come to that time in our service when we respond, when we respond to the good news that we have heard. God, as we do that, help us to ponder Yes, what we will give financially to the ongoing ministries in the world. But help us to ponder also what we'll give of our time, O oh God. Time is precious and we have little of it. Help us to give a little more to you. And help us also to ponder how we might give of our talents our talents that only we have, one in so many people anyway. Talents that could enrich your world with beauty, with grace, with love. God, in this time of response, help us to ponder how we will give of our time, talents, and treasures to your kingdom on earth. Amen.
For those of you looking for a theological reason as to why Beth snuck down there and put out two candles on the communion table, don't. It's called air conditioning. <laughs> and uh, this Sunday is last Sunday that piece will be there anyway, and it's just in time, just in time. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Beth, for preventing a fire in worship this morning. <laughs> Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but it is graduation season. It's graduation season all around. Just yesterday, LMU DCOM students who have worked very hard and followed the, pre pre the prescribed course of study set out by their professors, they walked the platform, shook hands with the dean and the president, and became doctor. Soon, very soon, Middlesboro and Bell County and J. Frank White Academy and all the rest in this area, we do have a lot of schools, all the rest in this area will gather in hot gymnasiums all over. Ever been to a graduation? You know about that. That's part of it. Gather in hot gymnasiums to honor the accomplishment of students who have literally been at work earning that piece of paper since they were five years old. Five years old. In a couple years, I was thinking about this uh, the other day, I'll walk the chancel set up by Columbia Theological Seminary. Hopefully that'll be the last time I uh, process in a graduation ceremony. I'll walk that and get hooded you know, with a doctoral hood. That's only a dream I've been working on since I was five years old. On Thursday, I was present at the Bell County Jail with uh, Jim Woodring back here. With Jim Woodring as Jim presented a certificate to Brandon McCarty for completing 26 sessions of anger management training. Brandon graduated, graduated the program. May is graduation season. I've always liked that Ascension of the Lord Sunday, more often than not, falls in the month of May. Ascension Sunday is, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the day that we set aside to ponder and remember the ascension of the resurrected Jesus into the heavens. On Easter Sunday, Jesus is raised. And for a period of time after that, the resurrected Lord lingers and appears to the disciples at the tomb, in a locked room, in a garden, all the way out near the Sea of Tiberias. And after a while, after 40 days of that, the disciples must do what Mary Magdalene was told to do in the garden. They must let go. They must not cling to me, as Jesus said, but let him go. For he has not ascended yet to the Father, Jesus says. I like that Ascension Sunday, more often than not, falls in the month of May, for May is graduation season. Jesus ascends into the heavens, and the disciples are left there, standing on the earth. Jesus does what he told Mary he would do all the way back on Easter now, and the disciples must leave the physical presence of their teacher and go out into the world and live what they have learned out there. So, in that spirit, today I'd like to do something a little odd. You're used to that by now, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to do something just a slight bit odd and play the role of the student speaker at your graduation, First Baptist Church. It's Ascension Sunday. So, good morning. Good morning. It is a distinct honor to stand before you today, class of 2018, 
and offer a few words on this, your graduation day. First, though, I'd like to thank the president of this fine institution, who is unable to be with us in person today. Yeah, let it sink in. But who sends his regards via the Holy Spirit. Also, I'd like to thank the choir, the pianist, the organist, the people behind the scenes who do such a good job that we don't even know you're there. I'd like to thank them. And I'd like to thank the deacons, the Sunday school teachers, and all of you for the privilege it is to stand here before you today. Most graduation ceremonies feature an accomplished and well-known commencement speaker, and this one is no different. We just heard a good word from the evangelist Luke. He just spoke. Luke, who wrote two books that people have been reading for 2,000 years. Luke is accomplished. This one's no different in that way. Most graduation ceremonies also feature a speech from the class valedictorian, and in this way, yours is a little odd. You've chosen not the first in the class to give an address, but you've chosen the last. I'm taking note of all of you who are nodding right now. We'll, we'll talk about that later. You've chosen the last, but I suppose that too is to your credit, for we just heard from Luke, and you know Luke's tendency to flip everything over, right? Blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are the hungry. So maybe you heard a good word from the commencement speaker already. The first in the class were he or she to stand here would likely deliver a powerful and evocative piece of prose wrought from the deepest philosophical and theological truths of the tradition and offer them to you as a parting gift. I, however, would like to simply tell you a few stories and remind you of a few memories. Do you remember getting in trouble back in kindergarten? You remember that? It was a long time ago now, and I suspect the teachers whose photos are hanging on the wall back there in that room to your right, I suspect not all of them would approve of me making light of it, but it was a big deal. Big enough deal that they changed school policy to keep it from happening again. It's in this book right here. It's, it's there. Uh, 1895. Man, you've been in school a long time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know how it works. A place like this has a list of written rules, right? Those are clear. And a place like this has a list of unwritten rules that everyone is expected to follow. And when the unwritten rule gets broken, it becomes a written rule. You know how that works, right? Every sign ever posted forbidding an activity has a story behind it. If you see a sign that says no smoking, you can assume that somebody smoked there. It's that kind of thing. Every unwritten rule that gets broken soon, be soon becomes a written rule. Do you remember getting in trouble back in kindergarten? Yeah, I don't either. But apparently we were a wild bunch even back then. The Board of Deacons added prohibitions to the school rules forbidding card playing and dancing. Mm. 1895, you know, they did that. By the way, that rule is still on the books. It's never been removed by the deacons. Uh, some looking around thinking we need to have some confession time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, confession will be held between the hours of 3 and 4 a.m. That's a.m. on Thursday nights. Uh, I won't be there, but confess away. 
Do you remember all the great work we did when we were in grade school? Grade school. It may have been the best science fair the school has ever seen. We were so experimental in those days. We would try an idea, it didn't work. We'd try another one and another one and another one. We had boundless energy, and the whole world seemed to be in behind us, pushing. We set up remote campuses called Dunlap, East Cumberland, West Cumberland, Southside, and, and Binghamtown. Well, I'll have to check my notes about that, get back to you. But nonetheless, we were boundless in our energy back then. It wears me out to even think about it now. We were so experimental in those days. And by the way, we are becoming more experimental these days too. We are mission wings, free community dinners, opening up the building to yoga, exercise, quilting, scouts. We just had a group of Amish missionaries here who left Friday, who were here a month. That encourages me, that experimental spirit that seems to be rekindling from our youth. How about middle school? Oh, come on, speaker. We just want you to pass over that time, don't we? Just go right on over middle school. Mercy, those were tough years. Tough because they were in the middle. That's why. They were in between the relative clarity of elementary and high school. And we were in between two, in between who we'd always been as Southern Baptists and who we were, and the Southern Baptists were becoming. And it was going like this. We had quite a few transfer students entering the school then, and they loved it and wanted to stay, but it required us to change our policies. Required that. Transfer students were beginning uh, to come. They wanted to stay, so we had to make the place a little more open so that they could. We decided to kick against the prevailing spirit of the day and offer free lunch to all who came, right down there at that very table. It was a beautiful thing, just beautiful. You're fully welcome at our table, we said, for our table, it's not ours. Who are we to stand between you and God's table? That's whose table that is. Boy, those were tough years, those middle school years. But we came through them, and because we did, we became who we are. And now, here we are, on the downhill side of high school, a time of challenge and joy and no small amount of anxiety about what comes next. It's graduation day. Everybody's anxious on graduation day. All the saints are gathered around today with their disposable cameras. Mom and Grandma has 16 of those in their purse right now. They're gathered around with their handkerchiefs, batting at their eyes, and their big hats. Even their big hats are here. The risers sag under the weight of all these witnesses. And if you squint, Folks, if you squint, I think even today you can see them in the room. Like, uh, like, right there, I think that's Harry Ho sitting up there. Uh, and there's Homer, there's Homer, hi, hi, yeah. And uh, 
That looks like Gene Osmond. No, that's Madison sitting up there. <laughs> Hi, Madison. Uh, Gene is sitting next to Madison, I see. And how about the, how about Charlie and Jake? Where are, oh, oh, there's Charlie and Jake sitting together. Yep, there they are. Is Herman here? Herman? Herman's here. Boy, could he play. Could he play. How about the Greens up there and the Brumbacks and even Ike? and Margaret sitting together once again. All those folks, if you squint today, you can see them. They're here, the, the balcony sags under the weight of their witness, and I believe they are proud of you. They are proud of you for all the years that you have put in, for all the spirit that you have, for still pressing on and following the wind of the Holy Spirit as it blows us forward. It is my distinct honor to stand before you today, class of 2018, and offer a few words on this, our graduation day. Those few words, you are ready. Trust me, you are ready. You have worked hard. Your story is a great one, one that is far from finished. The world needs people like you, People who believe what they've been taught. People who believe that grace is indeed amazing. People who believe that God really is love. And so love really does win. The world needs people like that. Graduation is not an ending at all. We call this kind of gathering a commencement service. Commencement is a beginning. So go, commence, commence living what you have learned. Sometimes it will be hard and you'll wonder if you're on the right uh, road, but go with the blessed assurance of the great company of witnesses who are gathered here today cheering you on. And whose footsteps you walk in every day. Go from this place knowing that all you have learned from your teacher is good and trustworthy and true. You are ready. Don't cling. Don't cling because Christ isn't here. He is risen. He is out there. He is out there in the cities, in the streets, in the stores, at CCM. He is out there. Go. Live what you've learned. And then you'll see him again. Amen. All God's people are welcome here, Jaden. 
Today is not only Ascension Sunday, but it is also Mother's Day. And we're glad you're here with us on this day too. Find this in your order of worship. There is a litany on one side. And this litany is really, um, it's the way we talk to ourselves and to each other on a day like this one. I invite you to join me in this litany called To All Who Mother With Love. I'll read the regular print and I invite you to read the bold. To those who gave birth this year to their first child. We celebrate with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badges of food stains and weary joy. We admire you. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms. Mother's Day is for you also. To those who lost a child this year. We mourn with you. To those who experienced loss this year through a miscarriage or failed adoption. We grieve with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointments, we ask you to forgive us when we say foolish things. You don't need To those who have warm and close relationships with their children. We celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with their children. We are with you. To those who will have an emptier nest in the upcoming year. We join the bittersweet celebration. To those who lost mom this year. We are with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hand of their own mothers. We are here for you. To those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising. We are with you. To all who live through driving tests, medical tests, and the great adventure of motherhood. We are ready for us to know you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart. Thanks for helping us glimpse God through your life. Amen. Will you turn that insert over and let's sing together God of the Women as our closing hymn.
And now as you prepare to go forth from this place on this Ascension and Mother's Day to eat, to pray, to enjoy one another's company, receive this benediction, this good word of parting. Depart now in the fellowship of God the Creator. And as you go, remember, by the grace of God, you were born into this world. By the strength of God, you have been kept all the day long, even until this very hour. And by the love of God, the love of God best revealed in the face of Jesus, you are being redeemed. Amen. Thank you.